So first part of the call for me anyway, um, whenever I'm learning a new 3D application, or I'll always go into preferences, uh, just to suss out, you know, what the story is, get an idea, type of things you can change. So I'm going to start off with, uh, with teams. This is where you're going to change all the, the color schemes for everything. So um, each of these uh, views or panels all have their own ones. You can uh, customize to your little heart's content there. Um, and it's quite easy as well. It's uh, You could just drag this off to a second monitor and um, you'll see it updating in the viewport as you change those colors. Um, port, yeah, this over here. Um, this 3D axis, you can set that to interactive and you can use these to move around the viewport um, or this is like the Autodesk Max uh, view cube but uh, I just leave it at the simple one um, next um, everything. not much to go into there, I'll go, I'll go over this line to view and I'm doing some modeling stuff um, add-ons, so Blender has a, um, a lot of add-ons a lot built in as well here um, natively on your install you can just um, activate them and they're easy to work with add-ons you just install them from here and they're either py files or zip files and uh, usually there's a bit of information then you know if there's any key maps associated and all that sort of stuff so down here also uh, this should be set by default on the latest blender it'll just save when you exit out of this and then you can also restore previous um, input. This is just to emulate your uh, new pad there or the three button mouse. So navigation um, for all you crazy Moto users who uh, like the trackball, which is the only I think application I've ever used that has this and it's nightmarish in my opinion. Anyway, so yeah, turntable is, is the way to go for me. Orbit around selected, obviously I want to have that on. Auto perspective is um, when you tumble out of orthographic view, um, it switches into perspective mode, which I don't like. I'd rather keep it like Max, where you tumble out of auto and you stay in auto. I'll only um, switch into perspective when I want to switch in, so I leave that off. Auto depth is great. It's like um, in Max orbit around point of interest, which is released, or sorry, which was introduced into Max in the last whatever couple of versions. But I find it very hard to use 3D programs without this type of um, setup. So it's great that it's in Blender. Um, nothing to see here. Key map. This is all your hotkeys. And interestingly, um, you mightn't even spot this up the top here. Blender. These are the different. Um, you can load in these key maps. So you. This is two point eight zero. This is the two seven X version. So for old school Blender users that um, are more comfortable um, using their their, their old uh, key map. And then industry compatible. This used to be, I think, in older versions of Blender where you have um, presets from Max, Maya, Lightwave, Modo, and so on. And um, uh, I don't know, apparently it used to sort of mess up uh, the rest of the way Blender worked with the right click, select, and all that sort of carry on. So this industry um, compatible one, it's here on this page, um, developer.blender.org. So basically they've taken, you know, all the main sort of DCCs and uh, averaged out the most popular sort of navigation and yes it is Maya style navigation which is actually what I use in Blender I'll show that now in a second so this is the industry standard standard one you can go through and have a look here and see if it suits you uh, personally um, I'm just sticking to uh, Blender's default and setting a few of my own hotkeys that I feel more comfortable with so left click um, goes without saying anyway for me um, anything else is just insanity but uh that's just me, I suppose. Spacebar action, so um, I have this set to tools. Um, you can also set it to search here, but F3 calls up that. It's like the Max X hotkey that brings up um, your global search. Play is just for uh, to play an animation. So yeah, I have this set to tools, and I'll show that later on. Um, another video and then these uh, point menus you can use these instead of um, of the tab to go in and out of edit mode um, this one here so we'll probably um, I'll show that later on as well and uh, that's pretty much it then um, key maps are obviously changing your hotkey so the most important one for me was uh, 3d view 3d view and then I come down here and I have rotate view, pan view, zoom. So I have all these set to alt, left, middle and right, Maya style navigation. And I found that I had to turn off this dolly view because there was a strange behavior where between right click and 
um, Alton right clicking to zoom in or out and the wheel it sort of kept jumping in and out of perspective as well so I just disabled that and, and it's worked out for me so that's pretty much um, um, the main things anyway with preferences so just one other thing I wanted to mention on hotkeys was uh, usually when I'm learning a new uh, 3D program I'd have a, a text file beside me and I'll just as I learn hotkeys I'll, you know I'll just type them in add to the list and then refer to it as I'm working and then it just helps me eventually memorize them um, so but if, I've thought it would be handy there to I use this um, scripting uh, tab here because it's about the the most useful this will be in my case because scripting not me strong suit so basically I've just typed in all these hotkeys as I've gone the ones I've learned and you know a lot of them now I have them kind of down but uh, I just keep adding to it as I learn new ones because there's so many so I just thought that'd be a handy sort of thing just to use this so the next thing will be hotkeys um, obviously you saw where you can change the um, the master key map up there but you can also um, pretty much right click on, on nearly anything here and assign a shortcut to it um, well most <laughs> most things anyway um, any of these tools and then into these menus so you can see these have um, whatever hotkeys that are assigned in the key map are going to show up here but you can uh, you can kind of uh, overwrite them anyway yourself but uh, yeah you can set pretty much just right click on anything and then um, assign hotkey and then just set your key and the same way um, you can remove your hotkey and also um, if there's one assigned already um, not that one uh, let's see this one here you can remove it or else change it and just override it so um, that's pretty much hockey is this sort of thing here Q is the default hockey quick favorite so this um, you can populate this yourself with whatever you like customize it it's empty um, on install so and it's also context sensitive um, everything in, in Blender pretty much is, as I showed in the last video. So let's say I'm in object mode, and there's there's my quick favorites list. So you saw here as well, when you right click on something, um, you can add that to your quick favorites. And if I go into um, edit mode, press and tab, and Q for quick favorites, you can see um, that's there's different tools in there because these are all obviously context sensitive. Same with uh, vert when you right click, edge and face right click and yeah context sensitive so that's pretty much uh, quick favorites and hotkeys so next are the actual uh, view parts themselves and uh, these panels and how you can change these to anything so obviously for max you're used to your, your quad view even though i don't really use it in max i do most mostly everything in um, orthographic sort of um, like this sort of view here 3d orthographic i suppose or isometric whatever you want to call it yeah you can change any of them but um, it's quite easy here in blender it's very flexible to change the viewport you know it's quite painless you can just basically you want you can drag off from the bottom of these panels and um, drag up that's it uh, to join that one into that one so i'm going to right click to cancel that and you see you can just drag out and then you can also split by pressing right click on your divider when you see this double arrow you can split that again and you get this um, divider line here and you can press tab to toggle between horizontal and vertical so i've split this up now you can see this is two viewports and so then if i want to join them back together you can just the arrow whichever way the arrow is facing um the one that's coming from will go into the one that the arrow is pointing into so i'll join the this join this and you can do that with any viewport from anywhere down here where you see the uh um, you see it's kind of rounded off at the bottom here the, i think an older blender there used to be a little sort of hatched triangle or something like that but um, you can also do it here um, and then right click join join right click join join so this button up here um top left of all these panels is where you can change them to whatever editor type you like so you can just um, change everything pretty much to everything and that button is, is where you do it so as i showed in the last video as well these two um the t and the n panels here that's the hockey is t will open and close this one and then you can extend it out and n 
this one over here and then you'll see that as well so say for instance i go into uv editing and you can see it's the same here n and then t is opening and closing that one another thing then is um, maximizing your viewports your your panels because remember these are all viewports as well so controlled spacebar will max in and that's pretty great so wherever your mouse is hovering over that's going to be the active you don't have to click on it and that's just the active panel so then you can just control and spacebar which is very handy and um, depending on what, what you're working in you know if you're running out of space or whatever um, you know if you're you're rendering here or whatever you're looked at in here and not much space you can just quickly go in and go out and then do the same with the render so that's a pretty nice feature so one other thing with the viewports here if you hold the uh, shift and when that when your cursor changes to that little uh, plus you can hold shift and drag and you see it drags out a clone floating window from that uh, viewport similar to this up here window new window but that's a clone of the entire sort of um, ui environment so just that shift shift and then click and drag and you'll get that uh, floating floating viewport which is quite nice as well and one thing to mention as well is that especially compared to max like this it's just so slick you can just drag things around and you never get refresh issues or redraw issues or all that crazy flickering and jumping around and sluggishness that you get in max even though the devs are working on it it's still this just it just feels so much more modern now granted um i've noticed blender can slow down um in cases that max max would never slow down like max's viewport nitrous is still um, the most powerful poly pushing uh, viewport of any of the 3d applications but um for all this kind of refresh stuff anyway you know i find blender to be to be very slick i haven't really pushed blender that much but i have you know got up to 30 and 40 million polys like and it's it's been all right like it's 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 ran pretty pretty all right and i've noticed then there's a sculpting branch that's pablo dobaro i think the bloke's name is that'll be eventually put into the main um blender whatever build um, and he's working with up to 15 million i think polys in sculpting so that's pretty great uh, viewport performance imagine trying to <laughs> trying to do that in max with its amazing um 1990s sculpting tools but anyway that's enough so yeah that's all the, the um, ui customization it says you can um, create your own workspaces here and have them populate up here as these tabs as we went through in the last uh, the last video all right i'm going to leave it at that so it doesn't get um, too drawn out and boring all right cheers thanks good luck